I don't know why I bought makeup here in a sack. Uh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm coming at you barefaced today because we're doing a chatty get ready with me. These are some of my favorite videos because I don't have to talk through the makeup. I can kind of just like get in the zone and also because I can answer your questions. So I went ahead and asked you over on Instagram and um, you know, I'm going to do my makeup and I'm going to answer things. I'm probably not going to be talking through so much what I'm doing with my makeup. So everything will be linked and listed down below along with links to anything I may reference in this video in answer to your questions. So let's uh, let's get into it. So what I will tell you is I am going to be trying out um, a technique I saw Samantha Ravendell talk about on her channel recently, which is basically where you do your highlight, concealing, contouring, blush and stuff, and then you um, buff out a really kind of like sheer liquidy foundation over the top. So I am going to be doing that just in case you're like, is this backward land? Today it is. First question is how are the doggos doing? They are fine right now. Roxy needs to have another checkup with the specialist and then hopefully we will be free of having to drive, uh, you know, about eight hours. But yeah, everyone else, fine, knock on wood, so far. Uh, thank you for asking. Have you ever had a cat? We did always have cats growing up, and then as soon as I moved out and, you know, had my own space, got a dog. Haven't looked back. Someone says, why don't you use Fenty Beauty? I heard they are cruelty-free. I heard that too, but... Anyone can say they're cruelty free, so I am waiting until hopefully they get on the um, Logical Harmony cruelty free brand list. That's just a list that I feel like best represents my concerns when it comes to cruelty free. I think I talked about this in a different video, so I will link that, but yeah, I probably won't be using them until either I have been able to ask some questions that I feel important or I see them on the uh, Logical Harmony list. Um, do you ever get the sensation of body anxiety? If so, what do you do to ease it? I'm not sure if you mean anxiety about your body or the sensation of anxiety in your body, but uh, yeah, I've probably had it. I would say if you're asking about like, do I feel anxious or self-conscious about my body? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, every month right before my period. I guess that being said, overall, um, I have a fairly healthy relationship with my body or body image. Um, so you know, I can't give like advice on how I've really overcome that because it really is just like sometimes that I find it especially overwhelming or, you know, I'm like, wow, I'm annoying myself with how much I'm letting things bother me like that. So I'm not really sure what to suggest, but certainly if I'm feeling self-conscious or, you know, uncomfortable, I make sure that I have clothes that fit me properly. That is a huge <laughs> help or I have found so anyway. And the rest, I think, kind of just comes with practice of when you find yourself maybe being a bit mean to yourself about your body notice that you're doing it and kind of force yourself <laughs> to well compliment yourself and I think even if you don't believe it right away sometimes and I think with a lot of things when it comes to self-confidence faking it until you really feel it is often a good way to go uh, somebody asked what do you recommend to maintain a routine without an outside enforced schedule i.e nine to five job I guess, like, what are your reasons for wanting a routine? I know they can be helpful for a lot of people, but also some people just work best when they can kind of make their day adapt to them or make their job adapt to them or whatever it is that you're talking about. Maybe enforcing similar things. So like have a set lunch break, have a set time that you start work or whatever it might be. Have a, like a set time that you might go for a walk or a set time that you go get groceries and just like enforcing other little routines like that with a time frame. I think could maybe help. I'm just gonna use the rest of this highlighter here. I do think this is basically the only way that I really enjoy using this um, Farsali Jelly Beam highlighter. I think it's beautiful and it looks gorgeous on like bare skin, but uh, kind of hard to make behave with other products. So I think using it under things is my favorite way. See, like it looks beautiful on just like bare skin. Anyway, please tell me about your tongue and filter and piercings, any dental damage, how old they are, etc. Um, they're old enough that I kind of forgot that they were there. I would guess my tongue piercing is probably about, I don't know, like 15 years old. And then my filtrum may be almost as old as that. 
I was sure to go to like a really experienced piercer that I knew that I trusted because both piercings are ones that can cause issues if they're not either like properly placed in your mouth or if like the, you know, piercer doesn't really know what they're doing. So my philtrum is kind of pierced, not so much at an angle, but it's pierced in a way that the back of it doesn't really touch or affect my teeth. And then my tongue piercing, uh, which I often, again, forget that I have, is basically pierced, I think, as far back as possible without it hitting, you know, like, the stuff under here. So, again, that's not really going to, like, affect my teeth so much because it just really doesn't touch them unless I'm, like, sticking my tongue out or whatever. So, I have had really no dental damage or anything from it like that, no real issues. I would say my filter and piercing, I do remember being a pain in the butt to heal. And I did get like a lump on the back of it, which I ended up using like a cut in half aspirin on the back of it to like break down that like scar tissue or whatever it was. It was a weird situation. I would recommend looking into that before you try it yourself, but that is something I remember doing. I don't know. But really the only comment I've ever had from a dentist is that um, they're surprised that it hasn't caused damage for me or that they would recommend looking into putting acrylic balls on my tongue piercing because acrylic will break before your teeth will but uh I didn't listen so someone asked did you ever get your hummingbird tattoo I did um and somebody swiftly copied it exactly in the same place on their own body and um that was a bit weird I know like tattoo copying is a thing but I don't think I've ever seen it done of my tattoos like quite so blatantly. So yeah, I do have it and so does somebody else. And I think they were asking because I had mentioned it before because my family kind of like called me the hummingbird because, well, I feel like I do kind of have some nervous energy and I'm just kind of like always twitching and I have like a kind of rapid heart rate naturally. And so I am the hummingbird. And also I'm pretty sure my grandma had like told me that I should get it because she always wanted one, but she insisted she's too old. So it's a part for her too. Where are you from? I am from Bath in the southwest of England and now I live in Michigan and I've lived here for like, I don't know, almost 12 years, maybe 12 years. Time moves strangely, doesn't it? Someone just asked, where's Adam? I mean, I don't know, man, you'll have to ask him. Um, lots of questions about nails, vegan and cruelty free nail things, and will I make a tutorial? Sometime I will do a tutorial, but honestly it's such a pain in the ass and it takes me so long when I do it that I don't want to film when I do it because that's just one other complication to something that is like already kind of challenging for me. But um, the products I use when I do mine are Madam Glam, Builder Gel, and Poly Gel. So I will link it down below and I think I have a discount as well. Somebody asked, what do you say when someone makes jokes about your vegan and cruelty-free lifestyle? I don't know. I feel like I tend to just not listen to or pay attention to those people or like not really notice because it's probably not a funny joke. But if you do want something to say in response, and this goes really for like any kind of inappropriate or like offensive jokes, um, you can just say like, I don't get it. <laughs> and then what are they going to do? Explain it or say, mm, never mind probably gonna say oh never mind so that's my advice fair few questions about Adam I realize I have shared things before but also this is just my job and it's basically to talk about makeup you know like that's like one strange thing about this is I get it social media and I get that people share more but imagine going into like your office and people asking you these questions at work you know I mean maybe some would but like overall I feel like it's a bit of one of those social media phenomenons. I will let you know about my relationship and personal life, what I um, want you to know. And I realize I did ask for questions, but some of the questions sometimes are just like, <laughs> you knew that I wasn't gonna answer that. That being said, this is somewhat related. Marriage advice when dealing with mental health issues. I guess I probably have two things that I would say. One is that if you are on the receiving end, I know it's hard, but like try not to take things personally because they are really just like not in the right headspace. The other thing is maybe you are having some mental health issues. Um, I would say try and hold off on any big life decisions until you are in a better place mentally because you could really get yourself in 
uh, crappy situation with decisions you may make when you are not in a good place. Um, and I guess that really goes for both sides of it too. Like maybe your partner is like doing some very strange things and they may be really hurtful or just like doesn't go along with your relationship. I would say to wait until you're both in a good frame of mind to make any big decisions on your relationship. The other thing I would say, which I think often gets missed out of this conversation or looked down on, is that if somebody's mental health is too much for you, that's okay. I think there are often like this idea that you have to stay with someone no matter what and you can't leave someone with mental health issues. I agree with the thought, but also there's only so much that you can put yourself through. Like if the relationship is in no way serving either of you basically other than you being a caretaker, then I do think sometimes you have to make a really difficult decision. Because your purpose in life isn't to just take care of that person, it's to make sure that you are healthy, to make sure that you are fulfilled. Of course there are going to be times when like, you know, that stuff gets put aside because your spouse is having a hard time, but if that hard time never goes away and you just can't do it, I do think that there are sometimes decisions you can make or, you know, other family members or people that you can get involved to take some of the burden off of you. So I do just always want to mention that because I do feel like it gets left out of the conversation and it's always like, screw you if you leave someone with mental health conditions. But also, that's not your sole purpose in life, to take care of someone else. Somebody asks, have you ever tried the company My Monk? Or are they something you would be open to? It's funny that you asked me that because a few nights ago when I couldn't sleep, I remembered about the brand and I decided to order some. They didn't arrive yet. I remember when they first came out, I was thinking like, is this healthy? Like, is this just like a new vape, you know, like weird cigarette thing? And I'm still not entirely convinced as to what it is or how healthy it is, but essentially it's like an essential oil vaporizer. <laughs> but it's like a little pen and you are not meant to like lung inhale. So you are meant to like inhale into your mouth and then breathe out your nose. And I guess that's like how it hits the, uh, what's it called? What do I want to call it? <laughs> the old factory. <laughs> I don't really have an opinion on them either way, but you know, sometimes you get desperate when you can't sleep or you have an anxiety and you will try most anything. So if any of you guys have any info on them, definitely let me know. I do like this backwards makeup thing. Um, the only foundation I had that I think was like liquidy enough to do this with was the um, Kosas Tinted Face Oil, which I love. That being said, if you guys have any other recommendations, maybe ones that are not oil based, that are very liquidy, vegan and cruelty free foundations, let me know because I couldn't think of any. I feel like all of the foundations I have are kind of creamier or thicker or more full, more full coverage. I will say a lot of the kind of like blush and stuff underneath it isn't really picking up up on camera it's kind of washing it out a lot but in real life in daylight it does give a beautiful finish do you ever feel some cabin fever working at home so much absolutely but i think after some time you kind of figure out what that feeling is before it gets too far and you lose your mind <laughs> so in those times even if i don't really need to like go into town to get anything i'll just like go for a little cruise go to walgreens see what they have or like ask a friend if they're busy do they want to go for a walk or something like that just to get out because i do think especially if you work from home and live in an area that gets pretty extreme winters you already get cabin fever for either of those things so when you have both it's like compounded but yes i do think that is something that most anybody that works from home unless you're like one of those people who has like a really active social life and just like naturally has your shit together then people probably do struggle with it Someone asked, does setting powder always need to be worn? What if you want dewy makeup? Do you set with powder and then the rest will cut off? You don't have to um, use setting powder, no. And that really goes for all makeup steps. Uh, I would say try things out, figure out what suits you and don't worry about whether you think that X, Y or Z has to be done or has to be used because whatever works for you is what you should do. So if you do want a dewy look, you could either just like very precisely set certain areas. I think I go over this in most of my dewy makeup tutorials if you want to search for one of them. Or you could set the whole thing very lightly and then use some setting spray to almost like cancel it out. But you'll still get like a little extra <laughs> strength in how long it will last. So yeah, that, that would be my advice. Just try things out until you figure out what suits you. Someone asked, most painful place to get a tattoo? Please remember when I say this that um, everybody is very different. I've had people say to me like, oh my gosh, you got a tattoo there. It must have been so painful. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I was like not even top five worst, you know? Also, I just don't let pain in general put me off of getting tattoos I want because it's going to be painful. <laughs> 
but I think that the tattoo is worth it, so it's only temporary. Most painful for me, I would say, would be like toes, fingers, and then I basically found my entire back to be incredibly painful, whether it was like up here, whether it was like love handles, spine, my entire back, I feel like, has too many nerve endings. <laughs> I've seen other people sit for like hours on end, but I found it so incredibly painful Um, and then obviously like fingers toes lots of nerve endings on those because they are your Extremities and then armpits was like a different kind of pain. I'm gonna be using the opposites attract palette from elf by the way Uh, but yeah armpits Wow, you know most other tattoos I find have two types of pain. There is the kind of scratchy cutting pain of the outline and then I feel like there's like the dull, how would I describe like shading? It's more like a dull, a dull scratch, but like not such a pointy scratch. <laughs> but then armpits, armpits hurt like, you know when someone is trying to tickle you and be cute, like the flirty tickle, and then they like take it too far in the armpits and they're like digging in your armpits. I feel like this was like a middle school boy thing to do where they would like jam their fingers in your armpits to tickle you. But like it didn't tickle, it just hurt and you're like, you're a moron. That's what it feels like over and over and over again for like, you know, an hour or two. It feels like someone is tickling you very aggressively, jabbing their pointy little fingers in your armpit. And it is just, um, I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. And then also, uh, you can't really wear deodorant for a while until it's fully healed. And... If you um, shave your armpits, you can't do that until they're fully healed either. So afterwards, you just feel like a weird mess because you can't use deodorant. Your armpits are flaking. They might also be stubbly because you've obviously had to shave them to get the tattoo. Then that starts growing in and, you know, it's just, it's a lot. So those are my most painful and um, why do I make some of these decisions? Advice on overcoming being a people pleaser. Thank you and love you. Love you too. It's hard, right? Um, and this is something that I have been kind of trying to be better at recently. So I'll tell you kind of like my experience and then you can see if you think it would apply to you. In online or work life, because I've talked about mental health stuff, people do then open up to me a lot. I love that. I love that people feel comfortable to do that and is really very flattering, but also it does be, does get to be a lot. You know, like I do my um, Safe Play series where I try and, you know, offer up some advice in a more controlled setting for me, so it's not just like constant. It's a bit more manageable for me, but then I do always get, you know, like DMs from people asking for advice or like telling me things. And again, I am very flattered that people feel comfortable to do that but that does get to be too much and again because I'm a people pleaser I just keep it going and that is something I've had to cut back on because I think being an empathetic person and being in this position online where everyone has access to you and you're open to talk about it and um, people feel like compelled to share things I do think that at times when I maybe give a bit too much in those situations is when I start to lose control of my own mental health. Because, you know, I'm not like a therapist. I don't have training in it. I'm just someone in a similar position of having, you know, different mental health things. So, again, on one side I'm flattered and I want to help. And then on the other side I start to lose myself because it's like I don't, I don't always have that much to give, you know? That is something I've had to do is not kind of like let myself get into those conversations quite so much online and more so say, you know, I'm really sorry that you're going through this. I have, you know, I do have this series that I do if you want to leave a question there. Otherwise, this resource might be helpful because if, you know, with everybody that messaged me who's having a hard time, if I stop to try and help them or talk them through everything, that would be my entire job because it's it happens a lot and I just... Um, I can't do it. So I don't know. Maybe some people will think that's like really mean to do But I think knowing your boundaries and how much you can safely give and How much you can give and keep yourself healthy is really important So I think that this may apply to your question and that's to know your own boundaries know how much you can actually help people and know when it's time to take care of yourself and not take on everybody else's problems because you will end up in a really bad place, most likely. 
So yeah, I would say that is my experience with that most recently. And that is what I've kind of tried to do is to help where I can and to know my boundaries and how much I can do. And just to remind myself that I'm no good to myself or anyone else if I let myself get so overwhelmed and weighed down by things because that is my specialty even when there's nothing weighing me down so when there are a lot of things weighing me down or there are a lot of other people's problems I really struggle and I make myself suffer by you know trying desperately to help when often I can't actually do anything so I would say know your own boundaries even set you know really strict boundaries for yourself if you know that you're <laughs> likely to ignore them and I guess just remind yourself that again your existence isn't to make other people happy it's for you to be happy and healthy and you need to kind of make that happen any way you can. So I really hope that um, was helpful and I hope nobody takes offense to how I explained that. It's not that I don't want people to reach out for help and it's not that I don't want to help people and I don't want to interact with people. I do and that is what gets me into um, situations where I start to really struggle because I just take on too much of that and um, you know you, you can help from a distance. I think I've said this before like you can be sympathetic from a distance, offer the help you know that is there and then know when you need to not um, take on everybody's problems. Lots of mental health questions. I think it's that time of year, hey? How do you deal with anxiety and eating properly and cooking? The short answer is that I don't. I'm very bad at that. Um, when I am anxious, I find it very hard to eat, I feel like, because my chest tightens up, my throat tightens up, and I'm just not going to swallow food. Like, I can chew and chew and chew, but it's, I'm not going to be able to swallow it. And um, that might be something I need to get looked at, but I've always been this way. So in those situations, I make sure that I will have, like, a protein shake, or I'll make a smoothie, or I'll have soup, or I'll have something that I know that I can handle. Also kind of food prepping some things to go in the freezer when you're feeling like that is a really good idea or using like a meal service, Vistro do like vegan frozen meals that are really good. Having some food ready for when you don't feel like cooking or you don't feel like going to the grocery store um, I think is also really helpful. And also just eating when you can. When you feel like eating, make sure you do it. Make sure you have something really nutritious. And the other times, just eat what you can manage, whether it's a smoothie, it might just be like a handful of, I don't know, dried fruit and nuts or something like that. Just make sure that you eat when you can, have some stuff in the freezer or in your cupboards that you know you can stomach and that's easy to make and just try and be a little bit prepared for those times. But yeah, you're definitely not alone. I think a lot of the times when people think about being anxious or stressed, they think about overeating or comfort eating and really my issue is the opposite which is that I can't eat. I think also my body just loses weight quicker in those times anyway, so it just is like a bad cycle. So yeah, be prepared, I would say. Somebody asks, of all brands that are not yet cruelty-free, which do you wish would commit and why? Hmm. If I'm honest, I'm really just not super aware of brands that aren't cruelty-free because I just focus on the ones that are and using them and supporting them and promoting them. So really just any I mean, any of them, you know, because uh, it's time. Just be cruelty free. Thank you so much. Somebody asked, can you film an organization series? This is another one that's kind of like my answer for um, filming more food stuff. That's kind of like my therapy. So I do that to kind of like make myself feel better and pass the time and decompress. I think when you are in this job, you kind of run the risk of making every part of your life part of your job. And I just don't think that's healthy. Maybe I'll try and work on some organization-y type videos. But typically what I'll do is I will organize and then I'll kind of like share it with you a little bit on Instagram stories because it doesn't encroach so much on my personal organizing time. <laughs> so I will absolutely try, but that's kind of the reason why I've not is that it's, it's like my decompressing, relaxing time. The only thing I wish this palette had was a lighter kind of eggshell matte color. This one kind of comes out a little strange on the skin. Other than that, I think it's really a fun little palette. Okay, somebody asks, I was inspired by you to get my hair short and love it. Any tips to add volume and texture? Definitely check out that last hair video I did with um, Giovanni. Some of those products I think definitely add volume and texture. I would also look into, what is it, Josh Rosebrook. He has some really nice products. Um, Evolve, H, Evolve. 
But yeah, those are some I would recommend looking into. I am going to go ahead and do my brows and put some lashes on and I will be right back. Feeling like a new human now. So I think all I did extra was brows, lashes, like I said, and then I popped a little bit of this in the center of the lid. I'm going to put a little bit more on the inner corner. So the um, the form that I put on my Instagram to collect questions, I don't know if it expired or, but it won't let me look at it anymore. So I don't have any more questions. I guess I'm just in this by myself now. And um, let's get this face done. Now, because I did such like intense eyes, the rest of my face needs some more. <laughs> it needs more. So I'm just gonna take some of this Milani bronzer. Oh, I know what I can ask you guys. Let me know your current favorite drugstore makeup down below. I feel like I wanna grab some new things. I'm gonna add some more blush. So I grabbed these two from e.l.f. They're the primer infused blushes. And I got Always Rosy, which is a beautiful shade. And then I got Always Cheeky, which looks a little light, but actually I'm pale enough right now that let's uh, just give it a go. And this is my favorite brush for like, powder blush application, it's the Dellium Tapered Highlighting Brush. Great for highlighting too, but I just I like it a lot for blush. Yeah, okay, it does show up because I'm so pale right now. Oh, also, UK people, what are some products, foods, things I need to try when I go home? Let me know please, thank you. Let's do some more highlight. Milani, mm, love this one. Oh, and I've been doing my brows a little differently, just like the last week or so. I've just been using a clear brow gel from Anastasia and then the Anastasia brow powder and kind of doing like very exact strokes. I'm liking it right now. Let's do some lips. Do I have anything else but lips? I don't think so. I'm using the ColourPop BFF pencil as always. Why did nobody tell me I have purple eyeshadow in the crack of my nose? Oh well, can't get off any more than that. I grabbed a couple lip options. They're all from Pixie and they're all the Matte Last Liquid Lip. One, when did I wear this? I wore this in my gift guide video and I think a few people asked. This is the color Pastel Petal, which is a little pinky, but I think I may go for, I have Bare Beauty or Matte Beige. I might do Bare Beauty. They smell so good. Like a chocolate orange. And actually, these last very well on the lips. Ooh, I love that color. Mmm, what a great combo. Wow, I love that. Okay, let me um get myself situated and I'll be right back. Okay, and then this is the finished look. This is actually the reason I like doing Chatty Get Ready With Me is because I feel like the less thought I put into what I'm doing with my makeup and explaining it, the more I like the result or like the more relaxed I am. So I really like how those eyes came out. I haven't done like a purpley smoky eye in a long time and I used to do them always. So I am super impressed with this palette. I love that you have the kind of cooler tones and the purples and then the super warm side too. Opposites attract. It's in the name. So I think purple looks beautiful with like very dark brown eyes. I think it will make green eyes like mine look a lot more green. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you. If you are looking for any gift ideas, I do have a mammoth gift guide that I put out the other day. We'll link it below and in the top corner as well. My social media will be on the end screen to come and I will see you in my next video. Bye.